The concept of Russian roulette was introduced by a Russian poet and writer in 1840. In that story, the premise was stated, not knowing whether a cartridge was in the chamber, one player offered 20 gold pieces to his comrade if he would take the gun and shoot himself once in the head with it. Apparently, Russian roulette was first named in a 1937 short story. This version was a fiction about Russians who had lost hope during World War I, a single bullet fired, a cylinder spinning, and a suicide attempt. Five out of six chances to come out of the war as a casualty, far less gruesome than death by nerve gas. Since then, the game has become one in which you take a handheld revolver, remove all but one bullet from it, spin the cylinder, point the barrel at your head, and pull the trigger. The chance of dying is one in six. What a barbaric concept, and yet, even today, more than a few people die every year. Hypothetical question, if someone was forcing you to play and turned away for a moment, would you point the gun at them and pull the trigger until they fired? Liana Williams is the morning store manager of Boots and Skirts, a very successful boutique. She's been married to Sam for six years. While she has no children, she has maintained a slim figure and student appeal. Of course, the real reason for this was going to the gym after work several times a week. With her attractive looks and seductive body, she always had to fend off unwanted attention. Of course, she doesn't mind the lustful glances, so she dresses to impress. Sam is a mid-level manager at a startup research company. The hours are not bad, although some Saturdays have to be given up to solidify his position. Once a quarter, he attends planning meetings at the main office. He is currently absent for two days and a night. What attracted Liana to Sam remains a mystery to him. He's not overly skillful in the bedroom, but Liana hasn't complained or suggested anything to improve. Opening the driver's side door of the car she parked beside, Liana pulled the keycard from the mat. Tonight, it was destined for room number 218. Looking at herself in the rearview mirror, Liana was pleased with her appearance. This wasn't some cheap dungeon for scantily clad prostitutes. As a matter of fact, Liana was having her wedding reception here. It was a two-room suite with a living room, kitchenette, and a separate bedroom. Liana placed her purse and phone on the coffee table next to Ricky's briefcase. Taking off her low-heeled, open-toed shoes, she headed for the bedroom. There was silence, her cheerful hum turning into a gasp as she entered the bedroom. Standing in the chair was a very startled Ricky. Ricky Chambers is a physical therapist who works in an office in the mall, three doors down from boots and skirts. He's been married to Crystal for four years. There are no children in his family, although Crystal recently stopped taking birth control pills. She should be fertile soon. He is 27 years old, whereas Liana is 30. He teases Liana about being a cougar. He is no stranger to this hotel either, although several years have passed between the events. Ricky's wedding reception was also held here. The lovers had many other things in common as well. Father John Paul presided over each of their weddings. Ricky is not much of a churchgoer, but Liana attends Mass weekly. The priest is a tall, lanky man with a soft voice. Tonight was not turning out exactly as they had planned. Why did Liana flinch? Ricky was naked, except for a cheap disposable diaper. His hands were tied behind his back. The gag was preventing him from speaking, but the actual cause of the sigh was the noose around Ricky's neck, threaded through the attachment loop most recently embedded in the ceiling. The rope was just dangling in the loop. Ricky could have jumped down and tried to break free, but he had been warned that to do so would be certain death. When Ricky's eyes opened as wide as they could, peering behind Liana's back, she turned around and saw a short, dense man. He was hooded and holding something to his mouth. Before she could react, Liana felt a sharp pain in her neck. Though she quickly pulled out her dart, it was too late. A few seconds later, she collapsed to the floor. The hooded man undressed Liana without touching her sexually. He had made a vow and had strictly adhered to it. Once she was undressed, he put a disposable diaper on her. He easily overcame the temptation to fondle Liana's breasts, thinking she was sick. Fastening her hands behind her back and gagging her, he noticed that Liana stirred as the effects of the tranquilizer began to wear off. 
Setting up another noose, this time near the kitchen, he sat Liana down on a chair. The woman's noose went over Liana's head and down to her neck, passing the end of the rope through the noose. The hooded man waited for Liana to shake the shock from her pleading eyes. A voice Liana didn't recognize spoke up, Welcome back, Mrs. Williams. It's time to get up on the chair. The hooded man pulled the rope, tightening the noose around Liana's neck. Liana quickly stood up, and her twin towers became aroused by this perverse situation. Ricky was in the bedroom, and Liana was in the kitchen, and they could not see each other. The muzzles in their mouths prevented them from emitting anything but cavernous grunts. The hooded man stood where both could see him. Soon I will blindfold you and tie your ropes together in a noose, he paused, letting them know that this was not the case. It was time to give them a choice, you can save yourself if you jump down first, but in doing so, the person on the other end of the rope will die as soon as you pull the rope. He will be lifted to his feet. I've installed a device like a zipper that prevents the rope from changing direction. Sounds of whimpering came from both sides. So as long as neither of you gets off the chair, you'll both live to see the morning sun. Of course, one of you might slip while trying to escape and accidentally fall off the chair. In that case, curtains are for your lover. Add to that the possibility of one of you falling asleep and falling, and in short, lights out for your lover. The eyes of both of them opened wide, and tears of fear flowed down their chests. Liana was the prettier of the two, I suppose. Once you're on the floor, you'll have time to mess around. Maybe you'll make up a story about how you were kidnapped. As unprincipled as you are, I'm sure you'll come up with something. Her eyes darted from side to side. The roulette wheel was spinning. The lovers watched the man's every move as he pulled out a roll of duct tape. Pulling a piece of paper from his pocket, he said, Before I go any further, I must read you this, Mr. Chambers and Mrs. Williams. If you survive the night, keep in mind how easy it was to do this to you. Apparently, you have forgotten the sacred vows you swore to uphold. In the future, I hope to see improvements. If you do not change your behavior, however, you should be very, very afraid. He waited a few seconds for emphasis before continuing. So, it's time to cover your eyes. The hooded man stood on the chair next to Liana. He pulled the rope and secured it so that Liana realized it would be deadly dangerous to go down now. Then, he ran the duct tape over her face twice, blinded, she felt completely helpless. He quietly adjusted the knot, making the noose harmless. Lowering himself into a chair, he deliberately rocked Liana in the chair. She whimpered loudly, and urine ran down her leg. He cursed himself for buying cheap diapers. He wanted to make life easier for the maids when it was over. Liana quickly mastered herself. Your turn, Mr. Chambers. Moving a vacant chair to be next to Ricky, he repeated almost the same actions he'd done with Liana. Ricky also rubbed his leg as his chair wobbled. Okay, kids, time to tie your ropes together. Making haphazard noises while banging his tools, the hooded man smiled quietly. Although they didn't know it, the ropes weren't connected. Either of them could jump down without hurting or killing their lover. A knot at the end of each rope would hold them a few feet from the chair. Once on the floor, they had to wait for the maids to clean the room. I hope you have as much fun this evening as you thought you would. Perhaps our paths will cross again. You won't like it if they cross. This may be your last chance. Gathering all his tools, the hooded man didn't even look back as the door closed softly behind him. Would one of the lovers, or maybe both, Go to their grave knowing that they had decided to kill their doppelganger? What would you do? There was no television coverage of the attack. The police were largely uninterested. This was at least the tenth time something like this had happened, and the fifth at this hotel. Someone was messing with the lovers. As before, the security cameras had been broken into. The lovers gave statements that sounded almost identical to previous pranks. The spouses were not questioned as it proved to be a waste of time. After wiping the dust for prints and filling the memory card with photographs, the room was turned over to a short, stocky, very religious master, and an hour later, the room was returned to the hotel. 
Case closed. Liana reached home just in time for Sam's plane to land. She saw that she had missed his call, probably while he was waiting to board the plane. Text messages from him looked normal. When Liana didn't answer his call, Sam left a voice message, Hey babe, just got off the plane. I'll be home as soon as I can. Love you. Curled up in a ball on the living room couch, Liana stared at her phone. She wasn't ready to face Sam. Was he behind the attack at the hotel? Could he be trusted? She hated herself for these thoughts since she knew she was the one who couldn't be trusted. All of her sexy outfits lay in garbage bags, ready to be taken to the store. In her trance state, time both froze and rushed by. She heard Sam's voice, Hey babe, what's up? Oh my god, what happened? Are you okay? Liana couldn't hold back. She started sobbing so hard she couldn't catch her breath. Tell me what happened. What can I do to help? It was a very long 15 minutes for Sam as he watched his favorite woman suffer. Finally, Liana pulled herself together. Liana spoke up, a hooded man came up to me. I thought he was going to rape or kill me, but then he got scared and ran away. It scared me more than anything I had ever experienced. I talked to the police, but since he didn't do anything, they won't investigate anything. I will dress very conservatively from now on. They cuddled until bedtime. Liana wanted Sam to make love to her, which he gladly and repeatedly did that weekend. Crystal Chambers was pleasantly surprised when Ricky met her flight. She usually hitched a ride. He handed her a bouquet of roses. Thank you, sir, what's the occasion? Well, man, I really missed you this time. I don't know what I would have done without you. The lovemaking that night was arranged to please Crystal, who praised Ricky repeatedly. Unfortunately, after a few weeks, Ricky fell into a depression, unable to bear being honest with Crystal. He turned to his father, John Paul, for help. Liana needed to go to confession. She and Sam had been married at St. Martha's Church by Father John Paul. She couldn't wait to hear his soothing voice. Father John Paul heard the confessional door close. He pushed a small piece of cherry wood aside, revealing a grated opening. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. What troubles you, my child? I have behaved very badly. I tried to kill someone. Why did you do that? I thought he was going to kill me. Self-defense? Yeah, well, no. Oh God, I don't know. I'm so confused. Is that man dead? Nobody tried to kill me too. I know that doesn't make what I did acceptable. When and where did it happen? At the Business Suites Hotel last Thursday night. I know that hotel well. I seem to be there once or twice every week, organizing or attending weddings and receptions. Why were you there? I have another sin to tell you about. I was there to break my wedding vows. I see. Are you repentant? Have you changed? I am more than sorry. I'm very disappointed in myself, and I have changed. I have fulfilled all eighty and inwardly renewed my vows. I will never forget them again. If I could fulfill one prayer, it would be that my husband would never know what I did. It is not for me to answer prayers. Since I am very proud that my parish has the lowest divorce rate in Archbishop Clancy's Archdiocese, what steps did you take to save your marriage? Completely changed my attitude toward men. The only man who means anything to me is my husband. That's a very good start, and I hope you are sincere. If you are, I don't think you have any reason to be very, very afraid. Go in peace. Liana fainted. Epilogue, as with most things, neither Sam nor Crystal ever found out about Leanne and Ricky's date. True to her word, Leanne changed her closet, making it gaudy and functional. Men soon learned to stay away from her or publicly and sarcastically put her down. Sam noticed the changes in the bedroom immediately but didn't connect the two. He also didn't complain. Crystal also discovered that Ricky has become a more attentive lover than the man she married. 
Liana visits the confessional not so much to confess her sins but to assure Father John Paul that she is firmly committed to her sacred vows. She had indeed rededicated herself to her marriage. Ricky survived his bouts of depression thanks to months of counseling with Father John Paul. It took a little over a year before Crystal brought a child into their lives. The divorce rate at Father John Paul's parish remains the lowest in the Archdiocese of Archbishop Clancy.